prepare certified professionals because they tend to be more committed to higher standards and ethics and maintain an informed intercultural competency. Whether you are seeking to build a career or to upgrade your HR professional career, you need to get trained and certified at the HR Certification Center today. Our experience in training and certifying HR professionals is on par. We are trusted to offer a comprehensive portfolio of advanced professional credentials for the HR professionals worldwide. And today, more than 500,000 HR professionals worldwide in 125 plus countries proudly maintain our credentials as a mark of higher professional distinction. HR Certification Center, call or send a WhatsApp message to plus 233-244-822-855. Okay, um, very good evening to you all and uh, you're welcome to uh, this month's um, session on uh, our panel discussion we have on the labor laws of Ghana. So last month we had a discussion on uh, employment contracting, employment contracting. And uh, this month, which is today, uh, the 5th of June, we are looking at the leave administration. Uh, at the end of the session, we will be <clears throat> introducing to you um, what we'll be treating next month, the month of July, which will precisely be on the 3rd of July at 4 p.m. By the close of today's session, we will be announcing uh, what we'll be treating next week. So my name is Jeff Bassey. I am the course director for the HR Certification uh, Center. We are the sponsors for this monthly series on the labor laws of Ghana to ensure that we are able to balance our uh, everyday practice uh, with the law. We want to be sure that your policies are analogous with the law. So the, the employer represented by most of you who are joining us will not be unnecessarily burdened with liability simply because your, your policies contravene uh, the law. Um, this afternoon, we are fortunate to be joined by uh, two experts. Uh, they are both uh, legal practitioners. Uh, with some sort of specialization in employment law. Uh, first on my list is um, Jifa Van Der Poy. Now, Jifa is a senior associate with the Corporate Commercial Practice Group of Benchy and Lecture and Ancoma. Uh, over the past eight years, uh, Jifa has advised many local and international uh, companies, many local and international companies uh, of related matters, including uh, contracting, pensions, workman's compensation, immigration, data privacy, and income tax. Um, GIFA also represents uh, clients in employment claims, in negotiations, uh, mediation, uh, pro mediation processes at the National uh, Labor Commission. And so Jifa being an employment lawyer is well positioned to uh, advise on all the issues that we'll be discussing uh, this evening. We also have a uh, wind commander uh, retired, uh, Samuel J.A. Alote. Wind commander retired Samuel J.A. Alote. Uh, Samuel Alote is an electrical engineer by training, very interesting, uh, management consultant, Samuel Alote is a human resource practitioner and a lawyer. Uh, he uh, is the immediate past director, human resources and services uh, for the Ghana Great Company Limited, Gridco. Uh, prior to that, Samuel had been the head of HR for Stambic Bank for several years before uh, joining the Gridco as head of its uh, 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 as head of its HR and human services. Uh, Samia Alote had also held positions uh, in uh, the African Online Holdings Limited Kenya and later general manager for same organization in Uganda. He's currently the board chairman, Environment, Environment and Sanitation Group of the JustPon Group of Companies, I mean Zoom Lion and the rest. He's a member of the management committee of the School of Continuous and Distance Education. 
uh, of the University of Ghana and uh, adjunct lecturer and adjunct lecturer with the Ghana Institute of Management and Public Administration, GIMPA. When Commander Alote had been called to the bar for some years now, and uh, I have no doubt that with his um, you know, many years of practice in, H in HR, he is well versed to advise on employment law and uh, labor issues uh, in our country. So folks, we want to warmly welcome you to the conversation. Um, what we are supposed to be doing is to, um, you know, listen to our experts discuss the areas with us. Um, um, I will be moderating the sessions by uh, posing questions at them and for that matter, uh, coordinating um, um, uh, all of the answers, the questions and the answer sessions. That session is supposed to be lasting for uh, just about an hour after which we would be taking in your questions as uh, uh, individuals who are joining us. I am reliably informed that we have uh, some people joining us from outside the country. Uh, I think it is fair to place a disclaimer that if you are not a Ghanaian or for that matter practicing in Ghana, some of the, the legal positions on some of the issues we will be discussing with you may not apply directly in your country but may be quite different uh, in the country you practice or you hail from. But I also know that there are a number of Ghanaians who have traveled abroad who are joining us uh, this afternoon. Wherever you are, good morning, good afternoon, and a good evening to you, depending on the time of the country uh, you belong to. So folks, we are taking off uh, now. Um, uh, uh, we would want to put Difa on the spot to take us through the first round. Uh, I want to place on record that uh, as many of you know, and if you are not aware, by the design of the Ghanaian labor law, not every leave is mandated. In fact, there are only three types of leave that are mandated by law or that the employer cannot drop. They are compulsory that so long as you are an employer, these are leaves that you need to uh, uh, give to employees as employees have the right to have those leave. And then um, the rest of the leave would be discretionary. So the leave that are mandated, uh, annual leave as stipulated in the Labor Act Section 20, which cannot be less than 15 working day per calendar year or per year. And then um, the next other type of leave that is government mandated leave or legally mandated is the sick leave. We will also be looking at uh, sick leave. Uh, Section 24 sacrosanctly stated how sick leave cannot be competed as part of annual leave. And then we would also be looking at maternity leave. So the mandated leaves are annual leave, sick leave, maternity leave. All other leaves are non-mandatory. They happen at the discretion of the employer except when the employer makes it contractual or when it is an item of collective agreement between the union and the employer. Otherwise, these are the only three laws that are mandated. Now, I am taking the pains to share these because you, if you are asking us how you will be treating uh, casual leave, bereavement leave, um, steady leave, uh, compassionate leave, which, can, which some people refer to as the bereavement leave, leave of absence without pay, sabbatical leave, all those, some even do paternity leave, all those leaves are not mandated by any law. And so if your company is doing it, we have to be privy to what your policies say to be in a good position to advise you whether the employer is doing the right thing or not. So that the, as much as possible, our questions are supposed to be limited our questions are supposed to be limited to the annual leave, the maternity leave, and the sick leave. All right, please do pay attention to your device so you don't get yourself muting, unmuted, and disturbing the rest of the class. We will not be taking questions uh, orally or verbally. You have to use the chat column. So as, the, as we flow, you need to type in your question. So I read it out to our, uh, our August uh, resource persons to respond to the questions to you. All right, so um, Jifa, um, uh, good evening Jifa, Jifa Vanderpoel. Good evening, Jeff. 
Yes, a warm welcome to um, this platform. We are privileged to have you with us. Um, Thank you. you Happy really to be here. Your, your introductory statements uh, on uh, leave administration, leave being a right of a worker or an employee, and the leave administration being the right of the employer. What will be your introductory remarks on the subject of leave administration in the Republic of Ghana as far as our legislation is concerned? Okay, thanks, thank you. Thank you. So I think you've set the tone that leave is um, paid time off that an employee is entitled to by law. Um, the Labor Act clearly ha it has specific provisions on these, and it says that the minimum leave that any employee who works for a continuous period uh, in a calendar year is entitled to is up to two, is uh, for 200 days, you know, um, it's 15 days. So anybody who works within a year, as long as they are employees of the company, they are entitled to that 15 days. An employee cannot have any leave below that number. That's the first thing. Secondly, the law mm -hmm. says that annual leave will not include sick leave. So if an employee is on leave and they get sick, they are entitled to bring their excuse duty to the workplace for it to be deducted from their annual leave so that when the excuse duty ends, they can commence their annual leave. A maternity leave is also not to be computed as part of annual leave. Now, these are the rights of the employees. The, the, the obligations of the employer in relation to the leave is that the employer has to keep a record of the leave, leave entitlement of each employee, ensure that an employee goes on leave within a calendar year, and then they ensure, so you have to notify the employee within 30 days. But we know what the practice is that normally an employer will ask you when you want to go and they work around their business needs. But I think it has to be clear that the leave period depends on the employer's business needs because the law requires the employer to schedule the leave. Normally, the employer will do it with the employees um, um, consult, uh, uh, um, what we say, uh, conferring with the employees so that they're able to get a day that works for each part. I think that will be my introductory remarks on leave. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Jifa. I know that we have loads of questions uh, how to, as to how to maneuver our wish, uh, how to ensure that our policies uh, resonate with the position of the law, not just the letter of the law, but also the spirit of the law. Let me bring in at this time uh, our second resource person, Mr. Uh, Samuel Alote, uh, Wind Commander, retired. Uh, you're welcome, sir. Hello, Mr. Alote. Um, okay. Right, yes, uh, thank you, Jeff. Yeah, I can hear you now. In this early, I was not allowed to unmute myself. Uh, you, you can try that now, sir. Yes. Uh, Jeff, can you hear me? All right, we can hear yeah, you. Yeah, I can hear you now. Yes, so uh, just to add to what uh, Jifa said, uh, just two things. Um, Jifa mentioned that, uh, yes, it's the right of the employee and the employer has obligations towards that. Uh, the other two things that I want to add is that leave is end. It's not a gratuitous offer. It is end based on a uh, number of months you've worked, like uh, Jifa mentioned, 200 days entitles you to a minimum of 15. Uh, some organizations are quite generous. They give um, above the minimum. Um, a rule of thumb that most organizations use is, is that uh, you earn uh, one and a half days for each month set. So if you multiply that by 12, it's about 18 days and more. The second thing is that it is contingent on exigent of the work. And that is why the law also provides that leave can be interrupted at the instance of the employer. And that when it is, it is interrupted because of the exigencies of the work, uh, the employer must facilitate your coming back to undertake 
the whatever duties and responsibilities occasion the need for you to be recalled. And that the interruption uh, would not affect the leave that you're entitled to. And once you get that job done, fixed, you can go back and continue with your leave. So yes, it is a right, but there is a provision that that right can be suspended if it's in the um, prime interests of the organization so to do. And that rests with the employer to do so. Thank you. All right, uh, thank you so much, Mr. Alote, for those uh, introductions. We have a host of questions we're gonna go through. Uh, first and foremost, uh, Jifa, can you share your thoughts with us on what you think about uh, uh, ruling over leaves, as in whether leave can be taken in the ensuing year if it is not taken uh, in the year, uh, the calendar year that you're supposed to take the leave. Under what circumstances, as far as our law is concerned, can an employee be entitled to rolling over leave to an ensuing year? Is the leave automatically forfeited? Can you roll it over? What are the legal principles underpinning um, uh, either of the two? Okay, so, so the law says that leave is within a calendar year. A calendar year is January to December. So generally you are required to take the leave within that year within the 12 month period of each year. Now, if for any reason, either the employer interrupted the leave or you couldn't take it before the end of the year, the law expects that you take the leave at the end of the year. So that is December, depending on the number of days you have, you can take the leave from December into the following year. That is the only condition under which the law requires you to roll over leave. Otherwise the law says that any agreement that you have, whether with the employer or by the employee himself, uh, um, deciding to relinquish their right to leave is, is void. And if the employee decides not to take leave and the employer lets it go, I think it's an agreement. It's implied that the employer has agreed to let the employee not take their leave. And so that agreement is void. And it means that you should not be rolling over that leave into the next year. We know it is common where people pile up leave so much so that they can actually take um, about six months leave in, 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 in a year because it's accumulated over a period. But the law prohibits that. That's so much so that if whatever you accumulated over the period, it cannot be carried over. Only where you take the leave from the end of the year, whenever it is into the next year, that is only when the law will permit you to, to do that. Very well. So, Jifa, are you are you then saying that um, the practice of uh, leave and cashment is illegal? Yes. Whilst you are in employment, leave and cashment is illegal. You have agreed. It means you have agreed to 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 not take the leave, and you have relinquished that right. The leave is not a payment. The leave is rest. It's a rest period that the law has prescribe that an employee takes within a certain period. That period is the January to December. So if an employee is paid for the leave within the year, the employer and the employee have done an illegal thing. They have breached the labor act, which says that they cannot do that. And that is void by law. I, I can understand that the employer, the employee, in, in this case, you know, in the Ghanaian labor law, um, the, the law encourages us to, uh, you know, refer to the employee as a worker. So if I'm using the word worker, I will be referring to the employee. Now, um, I can understand that the worker does not have the right to sell his or her leave to an employer. But if at the instance of the employer, due to the exigencies of operational activities, you're unable to take your leave in a particular year, now, I see that the following year, the ensuing year too, I would not have the luxury of having you outside my office for at least 15 uh, day minimum. I mean, some companies have 25, 36 uh, working day leave per annum. I cannot afford to have you out. And I said, listen, I'm buying your leave. Here is a money in placement of the leave you are taking. Uh, for that of the a worker requiring or requesting to buy the leave is a no, no. What do you have to say if it is at the instance of the employer? 
the, the same principle applies because when you look at that provision in section 31 of the labor act it says an agreement to forego leave it doesn't uh, restrict it to the employee and clearly the agreement must be between the employer and the employee the employer is also not supposed to pay out leave of course there are situations where the employer has to pay out leave and that is on termination where or resignation when the employment ceases with notice and then the employer can pay out leave otherwise while the employee is in the employment, if the employee is unable to take the leave during the year, that is why the law has made room that take it at the end of the year into the following year. Under those grounds, you can roll over the leave. You can take start your leave, for instance, if you have 10 days, you start on the 23rd, discount your the public holidays, and then into the January, if the year is 2021, of 2022. The employer it's not, it does not get any exemption from those provisions on buying out leave. Because we have to remember that what the law is protecting is the welfare of the worker or the employee, that the worker has worked throughout a whole year and needs to rest. And that rest is mandated by law. So by paying out the leave, you have kept the employees still in, at work and, and, and you are defeating the purpose of those provisions. Hmm. Very well, thank you so much. Um, let, let's turn to, I, I, will, I will be reading out our uh, audience and viewers uh, questions out to us uh, later in the conversation. But let's speak um, uh, Mr. Alote's views on the uh, uh, question of whether an, uh, an employer um, can convert um, a central government restriction to leave. Now, what I want to say is this. So in the month of March or so, 2020, uh, there was a lockdown ordered by the central government. Now, we had many employers who would say, listen, to the extent that you are unable to, to work and you can't come to work, you are taking the period so determined by the central government as a, a confinement or restriction or lockdown, as it's popularly called, that will count for your leave or will suffice for your leave. Uh, would that act be considered uh, legal? Uh, yes, no, and what will be the reasons? Uh, let's have Mr. Alote share his thoughts with us on that subject, on that question. Okay, yes. Yeah. So, um, Jeff, the law has not expressly provided for it, so we can construe what the position of the law is. Now, as uh, Jifa mentioned, the leave is not a financial transaction. There is an explicit reason it's a rest period now it is also earned because of work done but if by virtue of a law we are all forced into a rest of sorts and uh, realize that on resumption uh, there'll be the need for us to take uh, certain actions to uh, kind of claw back whatever we would have lost as a result of that uh, uh, contingency, then some flexible arrangements can be made that those who uh, don't have any specific uh, things that they are doing at the workplace, you know, uh, can take the option of taking their leave so that when we come back, then those who were working during that period can also have uh, the opportunity to take their leave. Flexibility, uh, even in normal times, is that everybody defers their leave to Christmas time or some uh, festival, so everybody has to go. But the, the, the interpretation of that clause that uh, the leave should be managed based on the uh, 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 the workflow processes and the exigencies also suggest that the employer has the right to manage when those leave days can be picked. So um, it's not, it would not be an illegality if the uh, employer says that because of this situation, uh, we're going to enjoy some rest period. And of course, let's have some roster of sorts, some arrangements. So everybody takes a bit of it. Because at the end of the day, you are not working. So Jeff, how are you earning that leave? 
Okay, Ms. Aluti, uh, interestingly, during the COVID era, I think uh, Graphic Communications um, ran a program, uh, myself and Jifa were their resource persons, and uh, we had to discuss the question, uh, this very question. One of the issues that uh, a listener uh, put in was the argument of people take their leads for various reasons, and uh, among those reasons would be probably to go shopping, to, to visit uh, friends and family who lives elsewhere other than where the person lives. Now, there is a central confinement or central government uh, uh, you know, restriction on movement. So if you are telling me that to the, to, to, um, the extent that the, uh, because I'm already home and not working, that should suffice for my leave, uh, that there's restriction on movement. I'm unable to do what I would either to uh, I mean, be using or hither to have been using my leave for. What do you have to say about that, uh, Ms. Alute? Yes, I think that um, it, it is a subject for negotiation. Because you see, if everybody is going to be very technical and pedantic about it, we'll say that, okay, so we had a lockdown from February to May. Um, you've lost maybe three, four months. So you have not, I mean, technically, you have not worked. Forget the fact that it was a restriction that you shouldn't come to the workplace or whatever. But in instances where the organization had to run and some uh, contingency had to be put in place, then it would not be fair that whilst others are on the rooster and are working, you are using a, a, a government contingency to take you know, a rest and they come back and ask for money for it. Because then again, you say that you're taking your leave at a very special, uh, uh, for a very special location and so on. I think that it has to be negotiated. In, in the typical uh, real life situation that happened, you know, business unit heads were asked to come up with a rooster to see who should, you know, uh, be at work and who should stay at home. So if say you want to take your leave in December, you have your family outside the country and so on. Then definitely in that roster, you have to come to work so that at that opportune time, uh, you can take your well-deserved and leave. So it's, it's, it's something that I think businesses must sit down, think through it and uh, uh, have an amicable settlement. Because we can also say that for the period that the business was locked down, that you did not come, you have not worked. So how did you end the leave? Yeah, that, that indeed is yeah, a so, yeah, yes. law is funded on. Yeah, the you've law. not you've mm. not ended it. Mm. Very well. Thank you for, for those thoughts. Uh, let, let me turn back to Difa. Um there, there have been the uh, quest of uh, you know, uh, people wondering whether or not they are able to use their leave period as notice provision to the uh, employer in, in situations where the employee had to terminate the, the employment contract, i.e. resignation. Now, will my leave period suffice for, uh, you know, notice provision? I think that in the absence of any provisions in the employment terms, contracts, or manuals, there is no provision in the Labor Act that prohibits that. It only requires the employee to give the required notice under the contract. So if the employee is, has a month's leave and decides to terminate the employment on a certain date, and so therefore has, um, wants to use that period for leave, I don't see any prohibition on that, but we have to also look at the practical aspect. And because the employment relationship is a human, is a human um, one. The the fact is that why do we give notice? We give notice so that most of the time, for you to either prepare somebody else to take up the role in your absence or to to hand over. So if you are giving that leave, and if you give the leave period as your notice period 
the fact of would you have everything under control so that by the date of the end of the leave, you are terminated. If that is so, then I think that is fine. But whilst you are on the leave, let's say you've given the notice and you are on the leave because it's deemed that your notice is counting as leave. Even though you are uh, terminating the employment, you have to remember that the employee, the employer will grant you as their employer, employee at that time and can still call you back to come and do whatever needs to be done until the effective date that you have indicated in your letter that you have to be terminated. So I think that notice can be used as leave. The law does not prohibit that at all. Sub sub subject to whatever terms you have agreed in your employment contract or with your, or whatever collective argument you have. But, but if I, you did argue that um, notice provision it's also to make up for, you know, um, uh, let, let's call it um, uh, handing over, all right? And so you need time to be at work in order to hand over properly to, to your employer. So if you are on leave and you are unable to do the handing over, it's not just about writing report. Maybe you need to give us a status of how, how, your, your, how you have been dealing with that particular supplier to the company, that particular financier, that particular uh, customer, and we need you around to walk us through. You are sitting at home, and then you tell us that we should count your leave period as um, a notice. By, by the time your leave would have been expiring, uh, then a notice would have also uh, been due, and then you separate from the organization. Now, how do you juggle or play in between that? Uh, you are not around to hand over properly to us. That probably is the spirit of the law, I guess, or the conventional wisdom behind give us notice so much so that the labor act says if the relationship is three years or more either party would have to give one month's notice much as section 19 talks about where there are expressed agreement between the employer and employee the only caveat there is that uh, which is more beneficial to the worker you shall go by that so in some cases or certain organization it is a whooping three months notice and i can cite the case of, let's say, basic schools, uh, you know how much um, it's difficult for you know, students to switch to a new teacher, particularly <laughs> when they have to write an exam. Then a teacher just tells you within the vacation period that I'm going. You don't have the time to prepare the students psychologically to receive needs. So be it in the academia or industry, the industry have it handing over challenges. Uh, how, how, how does that play? Okay, so there's, in the school situation, you said that the pe a person will be away, but in the regular employment where the employee is sitting at home and decides to serve the notice whilst they are home, the law has provided the right for the employer to call the employee back in cases of urgent necessity. I think that this situation will qualify where the employer needs the employee to come back and do whatever they need to do before the date of termination. Mind you, that notice period is a period where the employee is in is still at post. So while, an, while the employee is on leave, they are still an employee. And so all the, the obligations applicable to an employee um, whilst they are in employment still apply to the employee, notwithstanding that they have served the notice and the notice being a leave period. So the employer can still ask them to come back and do whatever they have to do, handing over, training, and so on. And if there's some days left after the termination, that's when you have to, the employer will then have to encash the leave, pay whatever the days that the employee would have accrued but has not um, taken in that notice period. You know, so I think that the employer has, has a, a resource to, to be able to call the employee back. And so there should be no loss there if the employee decides to use their notice period and they are away and they have to come back, they can do that. Very well, thank you. Uh, uh, you are an employment lawyer, and so we, we take your positions on the issue to be positions of authority. <laughs> let's, 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 let's pose this question at uh, 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 Wind Commander Retai, uh, Samuel Alote. Uh, Anka Sam, um, Section 30 uh, mentions, Section 30 of the Labor Act 651 2003, that termination not to affect leave entitlement end termination not to affect leave entitlement. And my understanding is that if an employee have earned leave and probably just before the leave could be enjoyed, you terminate the appointment of that employee 
the terminal benefit so described in section 18 will accrue to that employee. Uh, you may confirm or deny this position of mine. But uh, the thrust of my question is, what if the termination is initiated by the worker? In, in, in other words, the worker is the one resigning before the termination is due. So let's say in a calendar year of January uh, to December, an employee is due for leave, say, in November, and by October, the employee tenders in resignation. Would the employee still be, you know, um, uh, uh, be, be, be paid for the leave so end, except that you have denied yourself the opportunity of staying to enjoy the leave? Okay, um, Jeff, I would address this issue in the uh, two situations. First of all, leave can be taken, although there's an accrual system, leave must be accrued. Because of the way they work, uh, the calendar year is structured, it can be taken, you know, in advance. Because somebody may want to take the leave in March, you cannot say he would have accumulated only three months equivalent of leave. So it should just go for uh, maybe some five days and come back. So definitely you say by the rooster, you have to go on leave. So you take, you take, you take the, the leave days. Now, the second issue is separation is a, a very broad word or a termination for that matter. By however, the employment relationship is terminated, that leave that has accrued must be paid because it's been earned. And that is why when you are leaving and you've taken your leave, let's say you took the leave for the full 12 months and uh, based on some contingency, you had to leave the organization in the sixth month. It means that what you've actually earned is six months of leave. The other months that we uh, uh, assumed you'll be with the organization, and for that matter, we allowed you to take, we have to claw it back. You have to take it back from your entitlements or whatever we owe you, because you've not earned it. So to address the issue, um, termination separates or severes the employment relationship. And by whatever means, whether it's retirement or resignation, whatever has been accrued as end leave must be paid. And whatever has been paid in anticipation of the fact that you'll be staying and that uh, it turns out that you have to leave before uh, must be recovered. Even if it is at the instance of the employee or the worker that the contract, the employment contract will be terminated. Yes, Jeff, the word uh, termination means the employment contract was terminated. You must know that sometimes these contracts are determinable at will. That is why in most contracts, you have this clause, the notice clause, that if you want to terminate, you know, you have to give the employer uh, X number of months notice. And if the employer also wants to sever the relationship, there are some notice requirements. You know, so, and to, to, to add to what uh, Jifa said, so let's say I have um, 20 plus days of leave and for some reason, uh, I'm not happy with my employment. I want to say about the relationship. It's determinable at will. So I write to the employer that um, effective this date, I, I, I would want to sever my relationship or separate from the organization. And uh, I don't have to give you a lieu of notice because I've given you ample notice as to the time I'll be severing the relationship. And once that happens, then oh, I have outstanding leave or whether um, what I have is not fully covering the period. I mean, that can be worked out uh, as a financial transaction. Right, uh, thank you so much. Um, I'm, I'm switching over to uh, matters of- uh, Whether it's at the instance of the, uh, it's immaterial. Very well. 
uh, thank you, Mr. Alote. Um, um, so I'm, I'm turning to uh, Jifa on matters of sick leave. Uh, so we look at sick leave in just the next few minutes, and then we equally look at um, maternity leave, uh, after which we would you know, open the floor and read out our, the questions from our uh, listeners and viewers. I've gone through some of the questions. Trust me, some are real tough questions that uh, are the very heart of, of, of uh, leave management. And uh, the thoughts of our guests and resource persons, I'm sure, will deepen the knowledge of uh, all of us who are at the forefront of administering or, for that matter, managing leave. Now, Jifa, uh, the law is quite clear in section number 24 uh, of the Labor Act 651 2003 that sick leave uh, is not supposed to be competed as part of annual leave. Now, I mean, in my work as an HR consultant, I have come across uh, several employee handbook, HR policies of companies that seek to cap a number of sick day leave. As a matter of fact, one of our listeners have sent in a question. Uh, what is the minimum sick leave day? I am quite surprised at such questions. Clear the air for us. Does an employer have the right to place a cap or number of days on leave? In other words, uh, 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 saying that you are only allowed to fall sick X number of days in a year. What does the law say about sick leave? So sick leave is not capped. The provision in section 24 says that an employee is entitled to sick leave on production of a medical certificate from a doctor. So it is clear, there is nothing that should prohibit an employee or should, 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 yes, from taking sick leave as long as they can produce a medical certificate to the employer. I think the confusion always comes in when the employer is thinking about the employees or employer is thinking about sick pay, um, whether they should be paying the employee for the whole duration of the sickness. And the law, when you look at the schedule of the employment of the Labor Act, where it talks about what should be in an employment contract, it talks about sick pay, the conditions for sick pay, and then it says if any. From that, and there is no other provision in the main. The documents, you can tell that sick pay is not necessarily mandatory. It is quite a common practice that I think is accepted. Everybody thinks it's their right. It is not mandatory. The employer can give sick pay and it is that sick pay that they can cap and which is the norm that employers will give you a certain amount of salary over a certain period where you are sick. And then at a certain point, they can terminate the employment. Otherwise, what it means is that an employee should be on sick leave forever, continue to enjoy salary for as long as they are, they are sick. But we have to remember that when an employee gets sick for a long time, clearly the contract becomes frustrated. So Ghanaian case law says that if there is a, a, an uncertainty about the um, illness, as in when the person will become better or fit for their duties, or there is a permanency to the ailment or disease or sickness, then it means that the employer can't terminate the employment. So yes, the employee can get sick leave for as long as possible, but where it becomes, uh, um, it becomes a situation where the employee is or is not likely to return to work and will take a disease like tuberculosis where sometimes the, the, the duration, nobody knows when you can, you can, you will get well, but there is no duration or certainty about when you can come back. An employer can terminate an employee when that situation arises because clearly the contract is frustrated. So the issue here is that sick pay, it is it's what an employer can cap. I think we should clarify that clearly. Sick pay is what an employer can cap. Sick leave, you cannot cap. An employee can get sick and it is a, an emergency or it's a situation that nobody ever envisages or knows mm. when it would happen. So it is unlikely to put a number on it and say, you will be sick, you will not be sick. And we Very also well. have to remember that the law specifically indicates the kinds of sickness that you can terminate for. If right. it is a temporary sickness, you can't terminate. So if an employee is on admission for two weeks, doctor says they are likely to come back in the next week. You can't terminate on those grounds, of course, unless the doctor says they are not fit for the duties. But otherwise, a person who is sick for malaria, should be able to come back to work after they are, they are well, they recover. Very, very well, thank you. So uh, those of you or those of us who have 
uh, who had kept uh, sick leave in our HR policies, please do expunge them, take them out. Because once you appear before the National Labor Commission or the Labor Courts and things like that are in your handbook, I mean, uh, then it already gives the impression that you don't have fair policies. Uh, so much so that some companies can write that you have 10 working days sick leave this year, as if sickness can take instructions from the employer to want to stay for 10 days. And, and that's if your sickness spans beyond the 10 days, the rest will be written against your annual leave. Please go read section 24. All right, let's even assume that uh, you had granted 10 working days sick. The person have been sick for, have exhausted the 10 days, have exhausted a 15 working day for annual leave. What then do you do to that employee? So let's, let's, let's expand uh, that, those kind of uh, statement or clauses from, uh, so the person who is asking, we've already answered your question. What is the minimum days for sick leave? There is no minimum, there is no maximum. Once the doctor gives you a skill duty and all of that is what we are supposed to be working with. But let's speak the thoughts of uh, Uncle Sam. Um, there are situations where the employer uh, is confused whether he should separate you as in terminate the employment contract because you have been sick. Um, what are the circumstances? Um, do we just at the whims and caprices of the employer? Is it just the excuse duty? Uh, must there be maybe medical board? Like, I mean, fitness for work. Can you play around the issues for us? At what time can the employer say, okay. look, I can't continue paying you uh, 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 even though you are sick and you are not working? Yes, I, Jeff, I think that uh, it's a, a very technical issue. And there is a, what, what is anecdotal about it is that we go to many organizations and they say that our employees are our greatest assets, you know, which means that we cherish them, we value them, you know, yes. we, will, we will love them to the grave. Then when the sickness happens, you realize that the gentleman or lady is absent. The organization will have to undertake some reasonable accommodation to uh, hold the fort. The, 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 the caveat, why I say it's a moral issue, is that it should be for a reasonable time. Reasonable. That's why in some organizations, the schedule is, look, we give you full pay for one then have pay for the next six months. They will bring you before a medical board because we want to know your uh, your fitness for situations such as the uh, mainstream work. And if that is the case, uh, the drafters of the labor law were smart enough to say that everything must be determined by a qualified medical practitioner. So at that stage where uh, it looks like we have exhausted the reasonable time, uh, it is prudent to seek a second opinion. Normally, a medical panel is put together and then they will advise. If they say, look, this situation is not likely to turn around and that uh, the person rather needs to be taken off this heavy schedule and giving time to recuperate and so on. Then of course, on the advice of the medical practitioners, uh, the human resource can advise management on the way forward. But it has to be a reasonable time. Like Jifa said, if it's temporary illness, you know, uh, look, there was a case where somebody twisted the ankle, you know, just uh, where the foot joins the leg. And the person had to be away for about eight, eight to 10 weeks. You know, everybody say no, but it's just the leg. And the doctor says no. Uh, the leg needs to be immobilized for some time. So it was placed, it was placed in a cast. And uh, so that's it. So Jeff, I think that uh, HR should not usurp the role of uh, medical practitioners. We should allow them to help us uh, in those areas where we don't have the expertise to take uh, decisions that are in the best interest of the employee and management. 
Right, thank you. Um, um, we have just a few minutes to uh, end our, the, the first part of the conversation after which we'll switch over to uh, the numerous questions that have come from our viewers and listeners. If I, let me pick your thoughts. What does the law say on maternity leave? I mean, generally, give us a general overview on uh, maternity leave in Ghana. So the law provides that if an employee is entitled to 12 weeks maternity leave after the confinement of, of, of the female employee. The law doesn't say delivery, but we believe that what they mean is after the delivery of the child. So first, maternity leave normally commences after the birth of the child. Secondly, if an employee is on uh, maternity leave, they can add their uh, annual leave to it. And so annual leave will not be computed as part of, or maternity leave will not be computed as part of annual leave. An employee who gets maternity leave is still entitled to their full annual leave in that year. If an employee has more than one child or the birth is abnormal, the law says that they are entitled to two or more weeks. Then if um, uh, an employee who has recently had a baby is determined by a medical doctor or upon a medical certificate, which says that the employee is entitled to excuse duty or a period away from work, they are also entitled in addition to the three months. The last one is that whilst the employee is nursing the baby, they are entitled to take an hour off uh, work until the child is 12 months old. So when the employee resumes to work after the 12 month period, 12 weeks period, the 12 weeks maternity period, they are entitled to an hour, at least an hour a day to be able to go and breastfeed their child. Of course, we know that the practicalities of it will depend on the employer, whether you come to work an hour, earlier, an hour later or you close an hour earlier. That depends on the business and the agreement between the employer and the employee, because in most cases, the child is not on the employee's premises, and we know our Ghanaian traffic situation and so on. So those are things that are worked out. But generally, these are the rules on the Labor Act in relation to maternity leave. Very, very well. Thank you. Um, Jifa, thank you for uh, those thoughts. Um, Anka Sam, I, I asked you a similar question on, on sick leave, but um, let, me, let, me, let me ask uh, uh, similar on, on that of maternity as well. There are instances where for medical reasons, I mean, pregnancies that are described as uh, complicated pregnancies, the uh, female employee would have to sit home for say four months, five months, sometimes six months. In fact, there are situations where uh, right from the first uh, trimester of the pregnancy, the employee have to be, I mean, bedridden, uh, I mean, it's bedridden, have to lie down for the protection of the child. In circumstances like that, there have been situations where employers have had to challenge the, the entire confinement and why the empl employee cannot take the entirety of, let's say, eight or seven months while he's still being paid. Employers have had to insist on uh, receiving a medical explanation from the doctor, else they were not going to uh, grant such leave to the employee. Can you play around those issues for us? Okay. Uh, yeah, thanks, Jeff. I think that, you know, the medical situation when it comes to pregnancy, it's, um, it's a very delicate one. Uh, as I uh, mentioned in my earlier submission, uh, HR should not usurp the role of medical practitioners. I mean, I've seen instances, like you said, where from the very onset, even the first trimester, the person had to stay at home for nine months. And if it's the question of uh, excuse duties to cover the period, of course, the doctor will write whatever the situation is, and it's all legal jargon. I don't think most HR people can even interpret that. But so there's an element of trust. You know, um, we, should, we should not mistrust each other. I know people like to game the system, you know, but uh, that, that, that we cannot help. But where a medical uh, doctor issues a certificate of... Um, 
I mean, for an excuse due to your bed rest. I think we have to respect that. I know it's normally people in the unit or section that start complaining um, because they think that it's not fair that they came to work with their pregnancies and uh, uh, this colleague of theirs is sleeping at home uh, and not coming to work and the burden is on them. But we must, we must, be, we must empathize, you know, that we differ in our physiology, we differ in what we can handle, and we differ in our very, you know, makeup. Someone can, you know, come to work for the whole nine months, uh, someone too cannot. So it's about empathy, and um, it's one of the qualities that HR practitioners must have and ensure that uh, uh, they explain to people that without empathy and trust, you know, we cannot have that work environment we all crave that uh, conducive work environment. Okay. Thank Jeff, you. may I add? Uh, I, 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 want, I want to appreciate the lawyer, cum pastor, um, Samuel Alote. <laughs> Let's listen to you. <laughs> okay, so, Jeff. I mean, yes. And the law clearly states that where an employee is certified by a medical doctor due to their pregnancy, they are entitled to their leave. In this case, this will be sick leave. You understand um, the provision says so due that, that, that to pregnancy for a female employee beyond the three months uh, mandated no, by law. This is during the pregnancy. Okay. This is during the pregnancy. It says that where the employee is entire uh, is sick or is certified by a medical doctor as ill due, due to pregnancy, the employee is entitled to leave for that period. So this would normally cover all the sicknesses that a pregnant woman would. Um, would go through during the period and they are entitled to sick leave for that. This is before the birth. Section 57.4 clearly states that. So it is even covered by law and I'm, an employer has to comply. So Jiva, how will you cl classify that sickness? Temporary sickness, knowing that the pregnancy will not be there forever. <laughs> so so the pregnancy sickness has clearly been covered. So it won't be, a it doesn't matter what it is, whether it's temporary or it is um, permanent. Definitely, yeah. it is not permanent because we know pregnancy has an end and the yeah. law covers it. So there's a special provision made for it and employers have to comply with mm. that. An employer cannot go under that provision on temporary uh, sickness and say, the person has been away for six months and so I have to terminate them because clearly pregnancy has a specific provision and it is there, 57.4 of the act. Right. Uh, Jufa, let me take your, your, your view on this substantive question. Now, it is usually said that when a child is sick, the mother is sick. Now, there are situations where uh, a child is sick and the doctor would issue an excuse duty for the mother. It's five so, o'clock. So, so the child is not the, uh, a worker of the employer. The mother is. The mother is not sick, but for the sake of the sickness, the ill health of the child, the doctor issues uh, a, an excuse duty for the mother uh, as the caregiver to the child. Are employers obliged to respect such excuse duties? Yes. Yes, uh, well, the Labor Act doesn't specifically say so because the sick leave that is provided under the Labor Act provides for the employee themselves. But when you look in the Children's Act, it talks about the, the welfare principle, which says that the best interest of the child is paramount. Then the next provision says that the, the, in any person who is making any decision concerning a child, it says person, court, institution, it applies to anybody, must apply the best interest of the child. What is the best interest of the child in this case where a doctor has clearly stated that the mother needs to be with the child. And we know, I mean, those medical situations, what we are talking about, let's think of a child with holding heart, a child with a major cell injury that needs the mother to be there. The interest of the child has to be taken into consideration by, by the employer to grant that leave. Admittedly, that there, that provision is not in the Labor Act, but the welfare principle, I think, here is here, has to count um, in relation to that employee. That's what I have to say. But, I mean, I, I, you can also think of situations where sometimes the duration is long. And for this is where I think the human aspects would have to count because then it has to be 
negotiated between the employer and the employee. Hmm. Very well. Uh, thank you so much. I am grateful for the thoughts uh, coming from both of you. I know the second uh, session of our discussion will further deepen our, our, our knowledge on the, on the issue. We've got a host of uh, questions from uh, our, uh, you know, um, our, our listeners uh, all over uh, the world who have joined us. Um, so we'll be switching over to the next meeting. 93% of the world's leading multinationals companies prefer certified professionals because they tend to be more committed to higher standards and ethics and maintain an informed intercultural competency. Whether you are seeking to build a career or to upgrade your HR professional career, you need to get trained and certified at the HR Certification Center today. Our experience in training and certifying HR professionals is on par. We are trusted to offer a comprehensive portfolio of advanced professional credentials for the HR professionals worldwide. And today, more than 500,000 HR professionals worldwide in 125 plus countries proudly maintain our credentials as a mark of higher professional distinction. HR Certification Center, call or send a WhatsApp message to plus 233-244-822-855. Right, so at the end of um, uh, our conversation today, we will be giving you information on what it takes to become a certified professional in human resources. Uh, or the senior certified professional in human resources. Fortunately, the global professional body uh, who we represent in Ghana as our pool providers uh, have also given us the license to run the associate professional in human resources. The only one that doesn't have any entry level. For those of you who are wondering, I don't have any background in HR. I don't have uh, any, any degree at all, but I also want to become a certified professional in human resources. Uh, there you have it. We have the uh, Associate Professional in Human Resources, uh, APHR now, taking off uh, 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 within a short while. So uh, you hang on at the end of the conversation today. We have just a, a few minutes to go through the questions, after which we would give our final announcement concerning our certification programs, and then we will call it uh, a day. Uh, let me take off by reading out uh, various questions that have come from uh, uh, our viewers and listeners. I think the very first one uh, have uh, already been answered. Uh, kindly do check your backgrounds. If anybody have his microphone on, aside the the resource persons, uh, curtail it or mute yourself so we don't have the negative feedback. The first person's question have already been answered. Uh, minimum day for sick leave. There is no minimum. There is no maximum for sick leave. So if you have it in your uh, HR policy, please expand it. Uh, it's not supposed to be there at all. Um, then we have uh, um, uh, Enoch Ofori Wright. Must a worker be, be confirmed before he or she can have annual leave? I, I, I imagine what she, he seeks to know is if you are in probation, and there is really no cap on probation. I know standard practice in some public firms can be one year. Even the private firm that have six months makes provision for uh, 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 what will I call it extension of probation. So if somebody have done six months, you still extend for three or additional six months. I mean, the person practically have done close to one year at your workplace, but because you haven't confirmed the person, would you have the right to deny that person uh, uh, leave or not? Must you be confirmed before you can enjoy leave? Uh, any of the resource persons can take it up, please. Okay, so so the labor doesn't have any conditions precedent to enjoying leave apart from accruing leave on the basis of the number of days worked. That is even in the case of people who do not work continuously. But an employee who has been employed and is serving probation, they are entitled to accrue their leave. Leave cannot start accruing only after the probation. The issue is whether they can take their leave. So if the employer does not think that during the period of the probation, they can take the leave, that is fine. 
but they are actually accruing their entitlement, whatever leave that you are going to give them, minimum, which must be at least 15 days. They are mm. entitled to start accruing it from the first day of employment. And so no matter the, uh, the, the, the category of the worker, they are entitled to leave. Mm. But I so, know this is also a common provision that we see in people's employee employment manual where they say the person is not entitled to leave. It is not that they are not entitled to leave. They are entitled to accrue leave, but if the employer does not want them to go on leave during that period, it, it is a separate matter. So what it means is that if at the end of the nine month probation that you mentioned, Jeff, that employee is terminated, whatever leave they have accrued, they have to be paid out. It has to be encouraged to them before they. Very good. I, I so so Jeff is clear on the issues. Um, you may not grant the leave during the probationary period, but that is different from whether the person have earned or have accrued the leave or not. So the leave may be granted after the probation, but it start counting the day the person starts working because the conventional wisdom, the spirit of the law is that people are working and deserve to rest. So the status of the employee is not too important to the law. Thank you, Jifa. Uh, someone asked, um, must, uh, uh, can a terminated worker request for the employer to pay his or her leave, which he or she did not end? Oh, Master, but if you haven't earned the leave, why do you want to be paid for it before the termination of his or employment? Maybe for avoidance of doubt, let me pick the labor expert's uh, mind on it. Uh, Mr. Uh, Ms. Alute, uh, can, can, can a terminated worker request his employer to pay for leave he did not earn? Definitely no. Uh, you haven't ended. So I, I uh, it's not a, it's not a financial transaction, you know, <laughs> and it's also not a, a gift. It's not a gift, so uh, please uh, don't even request for it. It's a no-go mm. area. Okay, all right, uh, Sam. Somebody said, "Per your submission, you did uh, indicate leave is end, even though." Per the Labor Act, employee is entitled to not less than 15 days a year. Now, if an employee takes all the leave days, even though he has not earned all the 15 days, but resigns halfway in the year, will he have to pay for the days he did not earn? I, I, I don't know if you understand the question, but it's quite an interesting question from Evans Blade. So let's say the calendar year of January to December, you would have earned the leave, say, by December. But the employer decide to grant it to you ahead of time, say in April, a leave you are yet to work for or to earn. And then you decide, decide to, let's say, resign in, say, June. So you've enjoyed a leave for a full year in the first half of the year. Before you work for the leave or to have earned it proper, you have this, this resigned. Does the employer have the uh, right to demand that you pay back leave he granted you that you, have, you didn't earn? Hello, Sam. Unfortunately, yes, your, your I think that uh, is, is that is that is is breaking. Okay, yes. uh, let of, me try and position myself. So, question is definitely. Um, you know, salary is paid in arrears. Yes. They don't give the salary in advance. It is the leave that we can give you in advance. So, if you've taken uh, some leave days and you now decide to resign, uh, we will prorate what you've earned. And what you've not earned, we will take it back. Because we were not, uh, we just gave it to you with a certain understanding that uh, you'll, be, you'll be staying on with us. So the employer has the right to take that. You've not earned it. In fact, it's similar to the question that uh, can you go and demand from your employer what you've not earned. No, you cannot. And that is why most times uh, you have to give notice so that we can also look at what our financial obligations are and obligations to us. I hope that that clarifies. Right. Uh, thank oh, you. Yes. Um, yeah. 
We, we are good at Kazam. All right, Na Naomi writes, um, annual leave is end after 11 continuous uh, months uh, or 11 continuous calendar months per the law. Now, if the employee Hello? comes in for, uh, uh, Uncle Sam, I think your, your internet is quite weak. Um, okay, let, let's go again. Um, uh, Jifa, this comes to you. Naomi writes, annual leave is end after 11 continuous calendar months per the law. Now, if the employee comes in, for example, in say uh, May 2021, that person can take his or her leave in say March 2022. Now, during this period before the 11 months, can the employee uh, can the employee take some leave before the 11 calendar months? Uh, I, I, I'm wondering. I'm I'm struggling to to understand that bit of the question. Now, if the employer's financial year it's January to December. In this case, can the employees end, end full or prorated leave? Jiba, do you make any, any real meaning out of the question? I think what they're trying to find out whether you can take leave in advance because, uh, because the law says you have to do 200 days to, end, uh, to get the minimum. I think what they, are, they mean is that if it ends on a certain day and, and can you take the leave then? I, I don't know if I'm explaining the person's questions well, but I, I think so. You, 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 leave is prorated. Mr. Uncle Sam has said this several times that um, leave is prorated. Um, although you are entitled to it within a certain uh, duration, the calendar year being January to December, the employer will normally give it to you in advance because we can't wait till December for everybody to take their leave. That's why there's a need to do a leave roster so that people can take it so that by the end of the year, everybody has taken their leave. So an employee can take it in a year and it will be prorated. You can prorate it up to what the employee has end or the employee can take as many days as they want in advance. All right. I hope I uh, answered the person's question. It wasn't very clear, so. Yes, yeah, the question was not, I think there's a missing link somewhere. Now, Richard Wright, uh, Richard, your question is not well, it's not, it's not clear. Jifa, did, Jeff, did Jifa say, in his open, in her open remarks, that an employee's leave can be extended if a medical certificate is presented. Are you talking about sick leave or annual leave? Uh, what is the I want of to leave? think of maternity. I think he might be referring to maternity. Okay, leave. so can employees' maternity leave be extended if the female employee present? You know, let's assume that is a question. You can respond to it. Yes, the, the Labour Act does say so that if the medical certificate is presented showing that the person requires the leave, yes, it must be granted. Mm. The provision is actually clearly stated in law. Mm. I'm not saying it. <laughs> okay. Um, um, Nathan Wright, I want more clarification on section 25 of the Labor Act. No, Nathan, you would ask your question. If you want clarification on this and statements in the Labor Act, enroll for Labor Law Masterclass, and we will teach you. Otherwise, ask us your question. You, you don't just ask us to take sections and be explaining to you. So prepare for our next labor law masterclass happening in August, and we will peruse the Labor Act with you cover to cover. Otherwise, if you have specific questions pertaining to Section 25, ask other than just blanketly asking that we explain provision of Section 25 to you. Thank you so much. Uh, I think Nathan is the one who sent in that. Um, uh, is it Brepsi? Brepsi says, what is the duration that the employee, what is the duration that employee is allowed to to spend his or her leave days roll over into the following year? Is it only in a month or it can be spread over the whole year till December? Uh, Jifa, the meaning I deduce from that question is, if you are carrying over your, your, your leave, uh, can you decide to spread it? I think some people are thinking about themselves here. Every, every month they need some two days to go to their village or to do something, <laughs> or you have to accumulate it and take it in the ensuing year. Yeah, Jifa. The provision says it actually ends with, without interruption, but subject to the provision on urgent necessity for the employer to call the employee back. So mm. for your leave, that's 30 days, and you started in December, then it's supposed to end by, um, well, 22 working days, in, in, in depending on when you took it in December. It's ending either end of January or sometime in February. It doesn't, the law doesn't give any number of days that 
you, your leave that you have left should, should be. So it can be any number of days. The issue is that it's expecting that. So if you actually manage your leave well, and I mean by the employer, normally by the first quarter, that's the first three months, everybody should have finished whatever leave they may have. So that's if they are given 40 days and so on, no, people didn't take anything. But if employees have actually taken all their leave or most of their leave in the year and are only rolling over some, by January, most people should have ended their leave. So no, the law doesn't have any specific number of days. All it says is that in cases where you have leave, then make sure you start the leave at the end of the previous year into the next year. Uh, Jeff. Yes, please. Uh, I may just want to add that, uh, you know, employers and for that matter, HR practitioners must understand that uh, when it comes to accumulated leave of staff, provisioning must be done for it. So it's not in the employer's interest to deny employees the right to take leave. Because uh, the, when the auditors come in, they will look at how many people have earned the leave and have not taken it. Because like the uh, labor law says, they cannot forfeit that right, that entitlement. So then, of course, you'll be, uh, uh, it's not in your best interest to keep them because eventually you have to pay that money. Mm. So it's better you give them the rest. They come back refreshed, better work-life balance, and they contribute to uh, the good of the organization rather than allowing people to extend. Now, in some organizations, um, uh, like the, 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 the UN, for instance, they have a certain rule in some of the operations that not more than 40% of the full-time equivalents, that's the personnel in a, a section, can be on leave at any one particular time. You know, because of course, if more than 40% are away, say 50%, and their business can continue without any strain, then of course, uh, the number might be a bit bloated, you know. So the two things is that the scheduling must be done. It's in the employer's best interest to ensure people go. Otherwise, he has to put that money aside. And that will impact on his profits. Okay. Um, Jeff, please, let me just add one thing that, and this is something we have seen when a redundancy situation arises. A lot of companies do not let their employees go on leave. We've had situations where people have 100 days, 125, then a redundancy occurs, and an employer has to pay out all that money, which is about five months in addition to whatever package you are going to agree. I know it's HR people here, so what if you do not let your employees go on leave, the risk is that it becomes an expense you have to take care of when you have to send the employee. So not just the redundancy, even when you are terminating the employee, you'll find that the cost is actually much more than you would have in this age because of the um, accumulation of leave. All right, uh, thank you so much, uh, both of you. Um, uh, so Techno Right, I can, that's how I can call you. Your name here is uh, Techno, come on. You, you decide to use your device name instead. He said, please, is Jifa saying that even if I am already on leave and get sick, I can present an excuse duty for my leave uh, to be halted and continued after the expiration of the excuse duty? Uh, section 24. Yes, Jifa, are you saying Yes. That? Yes, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. So please. I uh, know we all don't do it, but that's okay. what is required. Yes. No, no, I, I have taught it several times in the lecture hall that you cannot say because an employee is already on leave, sorry, on my own annual leave, when employee falls sick and bed reading or excuse duty, uh, well, you're already on leave, so it doesn't, that session 24 is quite clear uh, uh, that sick leave is not supposed to be competed as part of annual leave. So our answer to you, Techno Carbon, is yes, uh, your, your sick leave cannot be competed as part of annual leave. Um, Galaxy Note 8 writes, uh, how do you treat excuse duty given to a nursing employee because her child is sick? I think we have already handled that question. Um, uh, please, Madam Jifa is saying, is Madam Jifa saying that payment by employer uh, while employee is on leave is unlawful? No, maybe you didn't hear Jifa well. 
uh, Jifadi never said that when you are paying, you are, I mean, annual leave is a paid leave. So you are supposed to be paid. I'm sure you, you didn't hear her well and you are mistaking uh, something for what she said. Um, gift is iPhone. Uh, so Hevod, what we are saying is that when an employee, when employees are on leave, you are supposed to pay them the normal pay because it's a paid leave, all right? Uh, gift is right. So we agree with the union executives that since the COVID, COVID period, uh, that since the COVID period, employees stay home uh, bi-weekly till, till date, and then 50% of leave period is forfeited for the business to keep running. So when we are writing, let's, let's, let's think about the reader so we are clear enough. Otherwise, the story remains in our head, and then we just put a, a scanty description of the story, and it doesn't make so much meaning. Uh, Jifa, are you able to make a meaning? It says, so we agree with the union executives that since the COVID period, employees stay home bi-weekly till date, and then 50% of the leave is forfeited for the business to keep running. Can you make a meaning out of that? I think he's trying to find out whether that agreement with the union uh, for them to forfeit part of their leave is, is proper. The law mm. is clear that an agreement to forfeit or relinquish leave is 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 void mm. so if the employees were at home then they should have just made it leave for them okay now now if we're right if we're good and uh, i think i'll di i'll direct this at uh wind commander alote um if the worker overstays uh the approved days of leave i imagine can the employer deduct the number of days from the salary and can a new a new LT, can a newly recruited worker enjoy leave? All right, uh, so let me come again. If a worker overstays his or her approved days for leave, can the employer deduct the number of days from the salary? And number two, can a newly recruited worker enjoy leave? We have handed the second leg to the question already. So Mr. Alote, you can focus on the first part. If a, leave, if a worker overstays his leave period and returns at a later time, can you deduct the, the number of the overstay from his salary? Uh, no, I don't uh, think it will be proper because um, you know there are some statutory deductions that you can take out of the pay. So definitely, first of all, you want to understand the circumstances. What caused the delay? You know, was it um, something that was beyond the individual's control? Uh, because, for instance, in some organizations, they give even travel days. Uh, your leave plus some travel days so you can go to wherever you want to enjoy um, your leave. So I think first, HR must understand the circumstances. And if it is in excess because the person, uh, for instance, overenjoyed. Then once the person is still with the organization, you just note that, that uh, what, when the uh, next fiscal year comes, the days accrued would be less by uh, the extended stay. But I don't think it would be proper to do a deduction. And of course, if the employee decides to leave with that outstanding, that is when, when you are doing the uh, uh, entitlements and indebtedness, you can net off. V very well. Um, and, and in addition to Mr. Alote's assertion, I think section 69 is quite clear that you shall not impose pecuniary punishment, punishment involving deduction of money. So those of you who an employee is late to work and you take 50 cities out of the employee's salary, it's illegal. So the law says you shall not impose pecuniary punishment for whatsoever reason, except for reasons stated in section 70. And in section 70, one of those reasons would definitely not be when an employee is late or fails to come to work. And maybe you want to explore a uh, vacation of post and all of that, pay for your policy, uh, uh, policy say to, to those things. If I wish to add something to this, no, I think everything has been said. Okay. 
Now, in Phoenix, uh, uh, 10 places, uh, if as part of a company's conditions of service, leave could be commuted to um, cash payment due to exigency of a worker's role, please, can this be considered a breach of the law, Jifa? Yes. It is Due to exigency, I mean, uh, I mean, it, it is difficult for us to allow you to go, uh, you know, maybe because life and property could be under threat. No, yeah, it's still a breach. The law says that an agreement to relinquish leave is void. So, and the employee mm. is supposed to take leave in the year. So, if within the year is not possible, make sure they take it from the end of the year into the next year. Otherwise, they mm. forfeit the leave. Very well. Uh, uh, Sam, I, I know I know this, this question should come to you because I know your position on this matter. Is that if an Doreen Wright, if an employee refuses to go on leave for the full year and even does not go after a grace period given the following year, uh, for whatever reason, uh, employee says, I won't go on leave. I'm not tired. I'm not complaining. Does the employer have the right to take away the leave from the previous year? not taken by the worker. So let me come again. You are supposed to take leave in January to uh, December in 2020. You refuse to take the leave. If you come back the following year to say you now want the leave, can the employer uh, refuse you that? And, and Sam, if you can add this bit, do employees have the right to at all to say, I won't take leave? What are the the options available to the employer. The employees say, I'm not complaining, I won't go on leave. Now I have met many situations where sometimes employees are sitting on rocks and they know that on going on leave, somebody else will act in their position and discover the rocks they are presiding over. So he says, I won't go on leave. What are the options available to the employer in addition to Doreen's uh, 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 concern? Yes, I-, I Yes, in the, in the Yes, in the first place, leave management is not the purview of the employee. It is clearly a responsibility of the employer. And that's why the law provides that the employer should look at what is happening in his business and accept the scheduling so that, of course, it's not going to impose, but the employees should submit when they want to go. And of course, if some uh, uh, ratios are to be met for the work to go on, then they can even tell the employer, no, um, we have too many people taking leave in this period. You guys go negotiate. The rest of you should move it um, downstream. So it doesn't lie in the mouth of the employer to say, uh, this year, I won't go on leave. Then the work happens. next year, you say he's not going on leave. It is not his place or her place to say so. The employer must schedule and issue the leave advice that from this day to that day, uh, to, uh, to whatever the period is, you are on leave. And in some organizations, even your access cards don't work. You can't access the premises because it is programmed. And uh, uh, you cannot say, well, you are you, you don't want the leave. It's not it's it's not your right to see. So. Mm. Yes. Very well. Uh, uh, my friend Susan Livingstone and she writes, and and Susan is an HR of uh, a prominent organization. She's uh, a prominent HR herself. She writes, please. Uh, do the experts think about a clause like this? Quote. In the first instance, an employee shall be eligible to end leave days. Uh, only after the successful completion of first 12 months of service with the organization. But the date and the period shall be at the discretion of the head of department for convenience of work scheduling, uh, 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 unquote. Now, um, uh, Jifa, what do you say to that? I mean, Susan is, is suggesting to us that this is a popular clause in many employee handbooks or HR policies. Mm, I think this question has come in another form. And I think what we said was that an employee, any employee is entitled to end the leave as soon as they are employed. Now, 
on the dates that they can go is where the employer can determine. So as soon as the employee, this provision actually says that they are not eligible to end leave, but that is wrong. They are eligible to end leave because the law provides that any employee who works within a certain period is entitled to leave. So they will be entitled to the leave. If the employer decides that they have to take the leave on the date on which they have to take the leave, that is a different matter. But whatever the employer does, the, the leave must be taken in a calendar year, January to December. Hmm, very well. Um, it's 5.30. Uh, a few more questions to go. Uh, we should be preparing to wrap up the discussion. We've been on for about one and a half hours now. Ideally, we like to close our sessions on discussions like this uh, before two hours. And we took off at four and we hope to be ending before six. So uh, those of you who are in a hurry that we end, give us just a few minutes. I, I, I think it's a great learning platform. Uh, you would want to take advantage to learn from questions of other people. Um, 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 Sam, uh, Henry wants to know, do weekends count during sick leave? Saturday, Sunday, uh, would they count in sick leave? If the doctor says, uh, uh, you should take, uh, you should have four day off work and that is issued on a Thursday. Uh, will we count Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday you resume or the four day would mean Thursday, Friday, and then you skip the weekends and continue counting from Monday. Um, it's consecutive days, Jeff. It's consecutive yeah. days because, uh, the, the excuse duty was not given to you because solely because you are working. Mm. It, it was given because you need to rest. So <laughs> if it is uh, five days, it's consecutive. You can't jump. You can't hit, uh, pick and choose what you want. I I agree. <laughs> now, uh, employees just just love to take advantage of the system. No 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 <laughs> consecutive days. <laughs> you know we undertook a research on. Uh, uh, Ghanaian workers and sickness, and you'll be amazed the results. The more Ghanaians fall sick on Mondays and Fridays than any other day of the week. <laughs> I mean, Ghanaian workers, all right? How convenient, yes. how convenient. Yeah. Mm. I'm telling you. Now, let, let me add to Anke Sam's uh, submission that there are instances where the doctor may specifically indicate working days. Now, what it means is that the doctor mostly would have taken into account the weekends because your recuperation would not know uh, whether you are working or not. So if you require four days and the doctor say uh, working days, chances are that you need six days because the doctor have already uh, you know, put into consideration. But in the absence of anything like that, when we say you are on a four day, a six day, a three day, a two day excuse duty, it's a continuum, whether it is weekend. So it is calendar days and not working days. All right. Now, um, um, Ursula Wright, an employee submits a one week excuse duty and completing the resumption date, should it include weekend? Okay, Ashila, that have been uh, so, so, so unsaid. Um, good evening, please. Is there any law in Ghana that holds employers or take them on with their refusal to allow staff to go on leave? Of course, everything we are discussing, I mean, is, is what the law say that employees are supposed to take annual leave. And if you don't grant it, you are in breach. And so that is it. <laughs> um, Wilson Wright, is there any difference between excuse duty and sick leave? Jifa, is there any difference between uh, excuse duty and sick leave in this term, as, as terminologies? I mean, uh, is there a difference? Well, the, the, the labor access sick leave and sick leave is because you are not well and should be away from work. I think it's just a common terminology we use, excuse duty. Because mm. excuse duty could be anything other than sick leave, I think. Mm. Okay, um, Enoch, I think your question uh, was just reworded. It's been answered already. How about the long-term sickness? Is there any practice, blah, blah? I think like some have spoken to that. Richard, your question is equally have been addressed though. Please, if a worker absent himself or herself from duty without permission, can the days be deducted from the employee's leave? Uh, that has also been considered. We said, no, um, you treat it as a um, uh, 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 vacation of post and uh, your policies must look, if your vacation of post days is 10 days and employee have resumed on the ninth day, <laughs> literally hasn't broken any rule. And even if it is beyond the 10 days, 
normally we want to be sure what effort the employer have made in looking out for the employee and all of that. Uh, because the, a person could be sick, bedridden, could not talk and cannot reach you. And you also didn't make effort to, to reach family members of the individual and all of that. So normally the courts want to look at these on case by case uh, 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 basis. Um, Ophelia writes, and because it's about pregnancy, I, I wish that Jifa responded to that. Should you deduct from annual leave if a pregnant employee attends antenatal? Or do we classify it as sick leave? So the employee takes off a, a day to, to go for antenatal. So are we talking about going off without permission? Because the uh, Labor uh, Act look, also look says- Look at either for us. Yeah, if the employee comes to you, I need a day to see the doctor. Uh, would you say, listen, your maternity leave is not due. And so that will be considered as taken out of your usual or your, 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 your promised annual leave? No. No, I don't think so. Mm. I don't think so. I think an employee, if you, ha if you have to attend antenatal, it's something in relation to the pregnancy. Mm. And it is a requirement of, of, of the pregnancy. So the employee, nothing should be deducted from the employee's um, leave, sick leave or whatever. Well, sick leave is not even, there's no duration. So it shouldn't be. However, the company chooses to classify it, I don't think it matters. What it is is that the employee is entitled to go on antenatal visits until the child is born. And so that should not be deducted from, from leave. Very well. I, I guess in the next uh, eight minutes or so, we should be bringing the entire discussion to a close. That would have been 5.45 p.m. So in the next eight minutes, we, uh, we will be, be done with the entire conversation. Now, um, um, many of you are bothered about the contact of our resource persons. Fortunately, uh, both Jifa and uh, and Kassam are, are members of our faculty, the HR Certification Center. I, I think Jifa had allowed that maybe her email be given out, so uh, those whose questions will not be able to address can 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 contact Jifa uh, any day for advice. Uh, if it is just advice over the phone or in email, as simple as that, you give. If it requires that, uh, it's, if it's consulting, uh, you would have to pay to receive the, the right uh, legal advice because Jifa works with a law firm, all right? Okay. Uh, so Jifa, um, Anka Peter, Peter Mobediako works for Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, want to ask, an employee takes leave uh, without pay for three months. That is leave of absence without pay. Whilst on leave, a medical issue known to the company resurfaces five days to resumption of duty. Uh, so, uh, Peter, your, your question is not clear. You are just narrating a story to us. If I don't know if you can intend what Peter wants to know. An employee takes a leave without pay for, for three months. While on leave, medi a medical issue known to the organization. So it could be mental issue that uh, is on and off. It could be, I mean, there are some sicknesses that, you know, are on and off. This surface is, five days to resumption of duty. Uh, how should the employer or the company treat this situation? I want to imagine that's what Peter wanted to know because he only narrated a story without asking a question. So the employee will resume on the, or, or, on the they said five days before resumption. Mm -hmm. I think that they said, uh, the law says that sick leave is not computed as a part of annual leave. Mm -hmm. One, two, the employee is entitled to sick leave. It's, just, it's three days before. So I think the employee can notify, but clearly those five days that are part of the unpaid leave, yes, the, the unpaid leave, will, 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 that period when he's sick, uh, I'm just thinking that during that period when he's sick, he's still an employee, but it is an unpaid leave. The employee on his resumption is entitled to whatever sick leave for the known condition that the company uh, will give. But I have to say that this is slightly a dicey one and I'm still thinking about it. <laughs> I don't know what Uncle Sam thinks. Uh, I don't know if Sam is still here. Some have an yes. emergency here to take. Okay, Sam, if you're here, can you respond to that? I think this will be your last bit. Uh, he has to attend to an emergency and we are just actually yes. working out. Yeah. 
if there is a contingency, you know, I mean, something comes up, we cannot, we cannot scope life, you know, to a T. So it's um, a question of really looking at the circumstances. You know, uh, and if uh, the, the the determination is that uh, the lease uh, is acknowledged, then definitely the best position. Mm. Uh, Jeff. Uh, yes, please. Thank you, Uncle Sam. We are grateful. Yeah, I'm having. I'm having. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, having it, we, we some, we some connection Sam. problems. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, if it because I'm moving are taking just two more questions and okay. then we can get questions. And so we can allow you uh, at this point. Uh, okay. Thank you so much, okay. uh, Mr. Samuel Alote, for uh, the it's a pleasure you have shared with us. Jifa, so we are just concluding. Will Hermina write, in a case where a company closes at 6 p.m., in other words, the employees get paid overtime, 5 to 6 p.m., uh, as they calculated overtime. Uh, if the employee is on leave, can the employer deduct that I think the obviously is yes, you are working overtime. If you're on leave and you are not doing the overtime, why should we always add it to your pay? <laughs> but if I, you can share your thoughts on it, whilst you are I, in the I, office, I, you do overtime and we pay you. Now yes. you are on break. We said the accumulated thing we have been giving you, though you're on break, you still deserve to take it. What do you say? Yeah, so they are not entitled. But no, I okay. can, um, in other jurisdictions where Overtime is like part of normal work. After a certain time, the employee is entitled. So it will be calculated as part of their income, but not for Ghana. And mm. you are not working. So you can't be working overtime when you are away. Mm. It's like oh. asking for lunch that is given to other employees whilst, when they are at work, when you are away from work. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so when you are in the office, we will give you lunch. But because you are on leave, we have to look for you and bring you your lunch. That is what you are asking, uh, Ax. All right, Jifa, I, I think let's take the last one. Uh, there are so many questions, more than 74, we cannot address. Like I mentioned, you reach out to us and then uh, we would, uh, um, uh, as much as Jifa can take, we will allow you to, to reach out to her and Mr. Alote to respond to some of your questions. And I am really amazed at the number of questions. Um, we have a labor law masterclass in August. It, it runs from August uh, uh, 9 to 13, Monday to Friday. There we will peruse the Labor Act of Ghana, um, Act 651, 2005, uh, sorry, 2003. We'll look at the Labor Act of Ghana. We'll look at, the, we'll look at contracting. We'll look at the supporting legislation, LI 1822, LI 1833. There are other legislation of reference, for instance, the Workman's Compensation Act, the ADR Act, the Factories, Offices, and Shops Act. We've got a number of questions. Yet when we state uh, labor law masterclass, some people do not want to come. So you have concerns, but you think that you don't want to come for paid events. That is all right. So if I will take the very final one, those whose questions we are unable to address is because of time constraints and uh, you can find ways of reaching out later so we can uh, help you address those questions. Um, um, Edward Wright, uh, there are instances, there are instances where, in view of the personal uh, relationship, an employee has with a qualified medical practitioner. Say, the employee's husband is a doctor, or wife is a doctor, uh, or brother or sister or something. An employee is able to obtain medical certificate quite easily to trigger sick leave. Now, what can an HR manager do when he or she suspects or doubts the skills duty, its authenticity, even though the said medical practitioner is a certified one? If you don't have trust for, I mean, I have witnessed situations where uh, the sister to uh, an employee who is permitted will call the company to say, my sister is lying, she's not sick. She's home playing around, going for holidays here and there. Now, when an employer suspects that the, the employee, the, the excuse duty is not genuine for whatever reasons, one of which Edward have stated uh, is the relationship of your, your worker and the doctor. What are the options available to the, to the employer? 
I think just send them to a medical doctor you trust to get a second mm -hmm. opinion. Good. So, so the magic is once you do, you know, it is out of trust and respect. We work with adults that, I mean, when you say it, you say, okay, fine, we believe it. But once you doubt it, you have every right to seek a second opinion on the issue. And uh, I think we would want to uh, end here. We spent close to two hours, there are, there are loads of questions, and I must sincerely apologize uh, that we are unable to address all the questions. Now, those of you who are not certified HR professionals yet, but, but seek to certify, uh, reach out to us. Uh, we will show you the way on how to become a certified professional. On your screen is uh, about our phone contact. Uh, you can contact us on 0244-822-855, 0244-822-855. Uh, you can just send a quick WhatsApp and um, demand that we share with you all it takes to become a certified professional in human resources. Don't call the number, uh, just send a quick WhatsApp and we will respond to you, 0244-822-855. Our next immediate session on the professional HR courses are starting on the 12th of uh, June, uh, exactly one week from today. So next week, Saturday, we are taking off. Uh, if you have a first degree in HR or not, you can do the professional in human resources international. If you have a, a, a master's that is an MBA in HR or um, uh, you have had some years of HR experience, you can do the senior professional. If you don't have any of these qualifications, the option available to you is to do the Associate Professional in Human Resources. So this is the Global Professional Charter. We are the approved providers in Ghana. Uh, we have passed out 26 different batches or cohorts. Our 27th batch takes off next week, Saturday, the 12th of June. 